writing a book on chastity, why did you want to do that? Because there are a lot of chastity books around. Well, I became a Christian at 31, and uh, five years later I entered the Catholic Church. But even uh, once I got uh, baptized, uh, baptized and became a Protestant Christian, from that moment on I knew that I had to get my act together because before becoming a Christian I had been a rock journalist, and I had... I uh, traveled around interviewing rock bands. I was in London many times, uh, and I wrote for Mojo magazine, which I understand is still going strong. And I was in a world that did not exactly encourage uh, chastity. I, I'd grown up Jewish, and I'd lost my faith as a young adult, so I didn't really have a foundation to to help me to be in the world, but not of it. So when I became a Christian at, th at 31, knowing that Jesus wanted me to live my life differently because that was what the Holy Spirit was saying to me in my reading of the Gospels and St. Paul's letters where St. Paul, uh, well, well, our Lord and, and then St. Paul also say that, say that the body is a temple of God and so a temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, so I went to the bookstore to find books on living out my sexuality in an appropriate way as a Christian. And all the books that I could find were on teen purity. And I can tell you that if you're 31 and you open up a book that says uh, that um, you must wait for marriage because if you don't, your life will be ruined and you will be forever stained and you'll always regret it. If you're 31 reading that, you've been in the world, uh, it's pretty depressing. I mean, it can just make you want to despair. So on my own, through <laughs> trial and error, I began to walk the Christian walk. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a, a, a Catholic book that um, I read even as a Protestant, and it helped me to understand chastity as a virtue, as a way of loving as Jesus loves. And that helped, but there was still nothing for people like me. So I wanted to write a book for people like me so that uh, they wouldn't uh, be so depressed, so that they could feel like this is actually possible. I can be joyfully chaste. Now, obviously, in our lives, if they haven't worked out quite how we planned or hoped, sometimes we can blame other people. And you do have a whole chapter in the book about the importance of not blaming your parents for where you've ended up. So why did you want to cover that area? Because presumably, you know, how our parents treat us and how they bring us up is going to have some sort of bearing on how we are as adults. But why are you saying let's not blame them? Well, I say that because, because part of growing up is becoming responsible for your own uh, decisions and for who you are. And uh, also as, as Christians, even, even though we do have parents and that's part of our story, yet our fundamental identity is as beloved children of God the Father in Jesus Christ, united by the Holy Spirit. And no matter whether we had good human parents or whether we had fallible human human parents or 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 you know ones who who did wrong things, uh, I we are we are still uh, part of um, most fundamentally the family of of God. And moreover, um, resentment uh, is uh, allowing another person to obstruct your own uh, relationship with with God. Um, and we don't want anything to obstruct us, you know, to keep us on our side Absolutely. from having the light of Christ enter in. So it's very important to forgive. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean uh, that it has to be reconciliation. I, in my book on healing from childhood sexual abuse, which I wrote as a survivor of abuse who found healing in Christ. I write uh, about how if someone is actively abusive and forgiveness means doing the most loving thing, part of forgiveness can be not giving that person another opportunity to abuse. Um, but uh, we can, even if we don't feel forgiving, we can still forgive. Forgiveness is not primarily about feelings. Forgiveness is a decision to unite your heart with God's forgiveness of that person and to leave the justice to, to God. 
Now, you mentioned there um, about the abuse that you went through as a child. It is something that you do mention a few times in passing in the book. And one of the things that really comes out in that is you say that God can't change the past, but he can heal it. And, Amen. Amen. And so tell us a little bit more about that, because there might be some people listening think, well, I need that healing, but I'm not quite sure how I can get it. (laughs) Amen. And I just want to just correct something I just said about leaving the justice to God. Certainly, if there's a crime, uh, part of our duty as Christians is to see justice done. But with regard to uh, forgiveness, it's not for me to to judge that person. It's for God to judge that person's soul. But that's a difference. Um, But with regard to my to my own uh, healing, in, in Christ. Well, yes, uh, I, I suffered abuse first as, as a child in a house of worship. It was, in, it was committed by an employee of the temple uh, that my family attended uh, who molested me when I was five years old. And then later, after my parents' divorce, uh, I suffered molestation uh, from uh, one of my mother's boyfriends. And uh, my mother knew about it, didn't stop it. Now, she feels terrible about this now. I should also say she doesn't remember everything as I remember it. Um, my memories are, are, my, are my own. Um, but in, in part of my, my journey, I've forgiven her in Christ, which doesn't at all excuse the, the abuse. Um, but I've also, I've also uh, found that in my primary identification as a beloved daughter of, of God in Jesus Christ, through my baptism, I'm united to Jesus Christ in his passion, in his death, and in his resurrection. Now, Jesus, in rising, chose to retain his wounds. We have that so beautifully in the Gospel of John, where Jesus invites Thomas to touch his wounds. And so I've learned, and this I write about in my, I write about it a bit in The Thrill of the Chaste, but mostly in my book on healing my peace I give you. I've learned that if I unite my own wounded heart to the uh, wounded and glorified heart of Jesus Christ, then his wounds can heal mine. Tune in to Woman to Woman with Maria Rodriguez, weekdays from 10.35am, only on Premier Christian Radio, where faith comes to life.